So how can we do keyword research for free? Daniel? So you need to take a step back before you even start this because everyone goes, what tools are free? <laughs> and then we need to take a step back. And you take the step back and say, who is my target persona? Who's the target person? And what's the user journey? And you might have like a see, think, do, care, which is the the, the model from Google. Or the race model. Yeah, so uh, race was Smart Insights, Dave Chaffee's uh, reach, act, convert, engage. Luckily, I remembered that. Uh, <laughs> and essentially, it doesn't matter how you break the user journey down, but it's thinking for this user, what are they going to be searching for at this stage of the journey? At the at the bottom, at the do bit, they like they actively want your products and your services. Whereas at the top, they're just browsing. They're not interested. They're, they're searching for things that are helping them on a day-by-day basis. So you've kind of got to go, what's useful to this, this person? Let's give them some content that's actively useful. So I need to think completely different from a keyword research. So start user journey and particular persona, and it'll be different for different personas, different mm-hmm. groups of people as well. And it's kind of like, a, it is kind of literally a funnel, isn't it? Because mm. actually at that C stage, the first stage of funnel, there are Loads. a million and one different combinations of words that people might be searching on because we're not really that focused. We're just randomly going about our our day to day business. As you scrum come down into the particularly that do stage, or oh, trying to rank for any like commercially relevant yeah. do like like keyword uh, phrase is almost impossible. Almost impossible. And uh, that for, for that reason, it's a longer term at the very yeah, least. Yeah, right? but for that reason, very often I'll cherry pick those for you know pay-per-click adverts because i can mm. instantly guarantee i'm there if i pay my money i can get get in at that point but a lot of this particularly with products where you've got a bit more of a user journey and people are making a decision over time actually you really want to get people into that funnel so that they're aware of you and that's where your organic you know content can really come into its own that's that's what the whole kind of magic behind content marketing right so that's it and that's where we need to use the right keyword tool at the right stage and there's probably there's four tools that are free or semi-free that we can use. That's it. You don't you wouldn't need anything else. Okay. So I always think top of the funnel, good place to start is questions. So what questions are people searching for? And if we go to answer the public, answer the public tells me the questions that people are searching for. So answer the public is good because it breaks it down. So you know you have your do questions, your can questions, but where exactly is it pulling all this data from? So what it's doing is it's going off to Google and to Bing and it's the Google and Bing autocomplete. So it's when you start typing stuff and it tells you the rest of the questions, they're they're pulling it from there. So it's really good because you can go in and you do a starting point. So if we put in um, Google Analytics certification, that's our starting point. It came back with a load of questions and this is a real example. And it said how to get, that's the main Question, right, we'll answer that question. So that's a good starting point. Um, You can then go through and when you're looking at these questions, you might want to try and understand how things are trending over time. And that's where where Google kind of trends comes in um, as well. And Google Trends allows you to see how the volume of somebody searching is changing over time. It doesn't give you the actual search numbers, but it shows you the trend um, over time. And that's that's really useful because you can, you know, Internet marketing, digital marketing, you see this really clear one dipping, one growing, you know, and so on. So I want to make sure I'm using the right phrasing for any particular audience. And does that work in different languages? What's the sort yeah. of scope for that? So it works in different languages and different countries. So you can go in through and say, in this country, in this language, who's searching for what? And it will give you those. And really granular, actually, it will go down to a quite granular level. Um, then you want to kind of start to understand what are the actual numbers of searches. And Keywords Everywhere is a Google Chrome extension. And it allows you to go in and every time you search in Google, if you've got it switched on, it will tell you how many people are searching per month for that search term, the average cost per click if you're doing paid search, um, and the competition between zero and one, zero being the least competitive, one being the most competitive. And then on the right-hand side of the page, it will give you um, related search terms yeah. and all those kind of things as well. And so there's a bit of a credit scheme to this one, isn't there? Yes, yeah, so it's not quite free, this one. The, the basic version does do some of these things. But also what it will do is you buy, I think it's $10 will buy you 100,000 credits. And every time you do a key phrase, that will be a credit. Yeah. So as long as you don't leave it on all the time, like I do, <laughs> um, you won't run through those credits too quickly. It's, it's amazing value and it's really convenient because it also works within YouTube. It works. And actually, if you're using Answer the Public, when you scroll down to that list of A to Z list of phrases on Answer the Public, it will give you numbers for those as well. Right. So it kind of enhances what you've got as well comes with a caveat though right so one of the things that i found with it very often keywords everywhere like it's pulling its data from the google adwords api 
So if you've ever used the Google AdWords tool, mm -hmm. that's where it's getting getting all its data from. And that's the only real reliable repository of how many searches are done on Google that there is. The problem that you've got, though, is that is a tool for AdWords advertisers, mm -hmm. right? And that's why they give you like how, you know, like a score out of like zero to one in terms of how many people are like competing within the AdWords auction for for this phrase. So when you see a one there, it means everybody's like wanting that keyword because it's really commercially commercially viable. Google are only interested in promoting the phrases that are commercially viable yeah. for AdWords advertisers. And therefore they give us the traffic volumes on that. There's a ton of words in there that you, you see in a lot of these tools. And the Google AdWords API is going to be saying, yeah, zero searches on that. Actually, in reality, we know some of those searches, uh, if there's informational phrases, will literally have hundreds, sometimes thousands of searches every month, but they're just not being shown in that interface because it's too high up the funnel. Like it's not considered suitable for AdWords advertising, it's more informational. So sometimes you need to use a little bit of gut feel and go, no, I reckon people are searching searching yeah. on that. Um, if you really want another source of data, have a look at Bing Webmaster Tools because they've got a keyword tool similar to Google's and they don't hide any of their data. Now, you're always going to have much lower volumes, but it's a good acid way of checking, let's, actually, is this popular? Does it have some search volume on it? So you have to sort of like balance these things out. Uh, personally, I think life's too short to be doing that every five minutes. So I tend to use gut feel a little bit. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, I reckon. And once you start getting your content out there, then you can begin to see, you know, if you're getting traffic, how much traffic that there is and you can see that within your own you know search console reports yeah and then i think the 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 final tool that i would probably use if i was looking for free tools this as well is uber suggest which is from neil patel's website and that does a lot of different seo things it's got keyword research it's got on page optimization tips it's got a lot of different things rank checking and so on as well it's a basic version that's very limited if you log in with a google account it gives you gives you loads more from that point of view as well right. um and you you can get access to all sorts of things. So it's it's a nice tool because it brings a lot of those different things together as well. So if it's got all of these different aspects to it, why is it free? So I think there's two things. One, there is a subscription-based version where you can get even more and it kind of teases you in for that. Uh, but actually, if you think about it, everyone's publishing blog posts. So Neil Patil came out and said, well, actually, if I do a tool that's really useful, everyone will link to that and it will drive up my website overall. So it's interesting because it's not, ubersuggest.com it's neil neilpatel.com forward slash ubersuggest so it lives on his main website so the main website gets the benefit of all those links as it's, well it's his link building strategy isn't it create right. a tool and yeah. it's not, it's a good one it's a good one <laughs> it is a really good link doing. to tools that's it because oh, cool. there's so much more and they're harder to build so therefore yeah. you know there's a bit more barrier to entry so you think about your user journey you make sure you're focused on an individual persona, a particular group of people. You work out what they're going to be searching for throughout that user journey. You focus on the areas where you think you can be most competitive with your content. Yeah. And then you use a range of those free tools for working out what do I think people are searching for? And then I'm going to factor those into my content. And in fact, use it to help planning my content in the first place. Of all three of them, which is the most powerful, do you think, Daniel? I think Keywords Everywhere is brilliant because it will show you how many people are searching, it will show you combinations and variations. And I think that's what's important because actually what happens is that you think people are searching for digital marketing e-learning and you find that there's only 140 searches a month, whereas online digital marketing courses, there's 22,000 searches mm -hmm. a month. And it's a real example. So I think you need to play with the tools. You need to, and it's not an exact science. You need to go through and use some gut instinct, as Kieran says as well, and go through and say, right, this is what I'm going to optimise for. And then you test and learn and test and learn. Please subscribe for more videos like this and visit targetinternet.com for more free digital marketing resources.